Welcome to Road to Guitar Mastery, the ongoing show where I attempt to master the guitar by breaking it down into its most fundamental pieces. In previous episodes, I've been focusing on the patterns that exist in the middle of the fretboard. Today, however, I would like to direct our gaze towards the leftmost extremity and look at a couple shapes for the 5-7 chord. In this lesson, I will also be going over navigation techniques and a little improvisation theory, so let's get into it. For consistency, I'll be looking at these patterns in the context of G major. Each of these numbers represents the scale degrees of the G major scale and how they lay on this section of the fretboard. This is also known as a three note per string pattern and is an effective navigation route for the major scale. The 5-7 chord, regardless of what key you are in, is made up of the major scale degrees 5, 7, 2, and 4. This first pattern is specific to G major, considering it uses open strings. The second pattern, however, can be moved all over the fretboard and used in any key. To look at some of the theory of the 5-7 chord, I am now converting the scale degrees of G major to the chord members of the 5-7 chord. This means that the numbers on the right represent the notes that make up the 5-7 chord, i.e. the root, the third, the fifth, and the flat seventh. Now we can look at some improvisation theory. The red notes are the most ideal notes to play when improving, considering they make up the arpeggio for the 5-7 chord. The blue notes are sus notes, or the notes that make a suspended chord. A normal triad, or three-note chord, is made up of a root, third, and fifth. When you replace the third with either the second or fourth, you create these suspended chords. Therefore, the second and fourth chord members work well over the 5-7 chord in an improvisation context. These notes are also considered the extended chord tones of the ninth and the eleventh when played up an octave. The green notes are the sixth chord member or thirteenth when played up an octave. This note is a good passing tone between the flat seventh and the fifth. Now let's talk about navigating the arpeggio. This exercise is great for developing alternate picking through string changes. Take any three consecutive notes of the arpeggio and practice keeping a consistent up and down strum throughout. Start on both the first and second note of the three notes to ensure you cover all possible picking directions. If this exercise is too difficult at first, you can simply isolate the string changes. I call these the inside and outside strums, considering the pick either stays inside the two strings or outside of them. Once these fundamentals are solid, you can practice playing the entire arpeggio using consistent up and down strums. You can also challenge yourself by playing the arpeggio in thirds. After you can play all these exercises, I would recommend randomly traversing the 5-7 chord, focusing on continuous unconscious playing. Stick to this one pattern for an extended period of time for best results. This concludes today's lesson. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and I will be back with another lesson very soon. Take care everyone.